I, I, I got to tell you, just every now and then something like really cool comes along that you just want to share with people. I have no affiliation with the company that is offering this uh, product or service, whichever you would call it. I guess it's both. Um, and they are not an advertiser, you know, nothing. I'm not promoting them. I just think this is so cool. And uh, the, actually, the way I learned about it was uh, w- w- among people who watch our program on Free Speech TV, it's a uh, uh, a donor supported television network, and people who make a thousand dollar donation are welcome to come to Washington D.C. and I'll take them out to lunch. And uh, a couple came who had you know who I took out to lunch, and they were just bubbling about they'd gotten their results from Twenty Three and Me. I'd never heard of this. Now, this was maybe two months ago, and uh, so I. I went home that night and looked it up, and Louise and I looked at it, and it's a it's a it's a company that that uh, it's a I, my recollection is it's in the neighborhood of about a hundred bucks, and uh, they send you a a DNA test kit basically it's a it's a little tube of uh, liquid preservative and a little uh, kind of like a, a Q tip swab, and you swab the inside of your mouth you know just underneath your upper lip and lower lip which gets a bunch of your cells and thus your DNA, and you send it off to them, and they analyze your DNA. And then they give you your analysis, and you can keep it completely private, or you can share it with other people or whatever. Um, and and I, you know, I don't want this to turn into an ad, but I just wanted to tell you that, that I, I, I'm just blown away by this. I have 283 Neanderthal genes or variants. <laughs> it's, it's amazing. <laughs> Uh, 60% of 23andMe customers have Neanderthal genes, and I am one of them. However, my Neanderthal ancestry accounts for less than 4% of my overall DNA. Neanderthals, by the way, you know, the average brain size of a, of a modern human is 1,500 cc's. Neanderthals were 1,600 cc's. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if that's... It may or may not be more complex. But anyhow, they also say that uh, I have... Uh, no Neanderthal variants associated with having straighter hair. I have one Neanderthal variant associated with a reduced tendency to sneeze after eating dark chocolate. I have one Neanderthal uh, variant associated with having less hair on my back. Isn't that interesting? The Neanderthals were apparently less hairy than the humans. And I have one Neanderthal variant associated with my height. Then I look at my ancestry in general... And uh, I am 99.8% European. I guess I'm a, about as white guy as a white, as a white guy can get. Um, I am uh, less than, let's see, uh, less than 1%, but it's there. Yakut, uh, 2%, two tenths of a percent East Asian, uh, one tenth of 1% broadly East Asian, one tenth of 1% Native American. Uh, 1.8% broadly European, 2% Ashkenazi, uh, 1% broadly Southern Euro- Southern European, but the most of it, I Northwestern European, 93%, and 37% of it, 0.9% of that is uh, is Scandinavian. That would be, you know, both my father's parents, uh, his mother and father were uh, Norwegian, and the uh, the the family secret, or one of the family secrets, I suppose. Uh, that ha- a- a- has been speculated about is that maybe my grandmother might have had some some Jewish ancestors, which would probably account for the Ashkenazi piece in there. I'm 22% British and Irish. That's my mom. And uh, 1.9% French and German. Six-tenths of 1% Finnish. 3.9% Southern Euro- European. And 2.6% Iberian. That's the Iberian Peninsula. The, uh, you know, in, um, that's Spain, isn't it? Spain and Portugal. Yeah. It's fascinating stuff. And so I just, you know, I, I, <laughs> and, and, oh, and then they, they, in addition to that, they go through, maybe I didn't print that one out. I thought I had. Oh, yeah, here it is. Um, I am, I have a gene that if I had two of them, it's called the DFNB1 gene, leads to hearing loss and deafness. I only have one of them, so it won't happen to me, but I could pass it along to my children. Louise does not have that gene, so we did not. I have the lactose intolerance gene, the LCT gene, so I am likely intolerant of lactose. I was seven years old when I started complaining to my parents about constant stomach aches. They took me to three different doctors. The, fi- the third doctor finally told me that my underwear was too tight. 
the first two thought that I had a psychological problem. And what I figured out by the time I was eight years old was that whenever I ate milk, whenever I drank milk, which my mom always wanted me to do, I got a stomachache. And so I, I became, you know, I, I quit drinking milk when I was like eight or nine years old, by and large. And sure enough, here I've got the gene for lactose intolerance or re- reverse that. I don't have the gene that, that would uh, allow me to, com- to uh, metabolize lactose. In my muscle composition, I, I'm an unlikely sprinter. I do not have the endurance, muscle endurance gene. Louise does. Louise is indefatigable. I mean, she will just work physical work, like, you know, you know, painting the house kind of thing. In fact, her mother, who is in her 80s, painted her house last year. Uh, and, and Louise is like, Mom, you know, you, you're in your 80s. You're not supposed to be on a ladder painting. Paint, I'm talking about painting the outside of the house. And, and, and her mom was like, well, I only painted one side each week. So, you know, it's like, and we're going, ah! but that is, so I'm guessing that, you know, Louise has that strong muscle gene. I don't. So, and I'm guessing Louise got it from her mom because her mom is like, she's, she's amazing. She's in addition to being a wonderful person. She is just like the energizer bunny, a uh, bunch of facial features, hair traits, physical characteristics, traits, um, skin traits, taste and smell. This is interesting. Um, I have three different genes that affect how I taste things. Louise has one, uh, cauliflower always tasted totally bland to me. Cauliflower actually has a flavor to Louise. And she's got the gene to detect the, the bitter flavors in this particular type of vegetables, in the, in the cruciferous vegetables, Brussels sprouts, uh, uh, cabbage, uh, um, uh, uh, well, the whole bunch of them. Uh, what, am I, what am I missing? The green one, broccoli. And and, uh, and and I don't. And I'm guessing that that has to do with where our ancestors grew up because they had to have the gene to be able to taste certain things to know, is this a desirable food or is this a dangerous food, you know? So, and then the Neanderthal ancestry, alcohol flush reaction. I can metabolize alcohol okay. Caffeine consumption, I'm less likely to consume caffeine, which I pretty much don't. And it goes on and on. It's amazing. You're listening to the Tom Hartman program. Call 202-536-2370. So anyhow, as I said, not an ad. I just think this is fascinating. I'm sure that there's going to be a bunch of other companies that are doing this now. The one that we did was 23andme.com. We'll be right back. To watch more clips from our programs, hit the Watch More Videos button over here. And please be sure to hit the handy-dandy subscribe button so you'll always be up to date. Tag, you're it.